All right, guys. So we're just gonna have one final last question here, and those are that this. I, I tried to give you a, again. I tried to give you as broad of a question set as I possibly could, right? For those of you heading into whatever stream you're heading into, right? And so we can we can see optimization is not just applicable to the sciences, right? We can we can ap apply optimization much like what we did in in grade ten to a financial situation or an economic situation, right? So for those of you heading into that stream. We can use this stuff to, to optimize uh, financial situations as well, right? And so uh, one question that we could see would be a very familiar question that you guys should have seen in the past. It would have been something like this. A commuter train carries 2,000 passengers daily from a suburb into a large city. The cost to ride the train is $7 per person, and market research shows that 40 fewer people will ride the train for each $0.10 cent increase in the fare. Okay. If the capacity of the train is 2,600 passengers and contracts with the rail employees require that at least 1,600 passengers be carried, okay, um, what should the fare be so that the railway charge or what, what fare should the railway charge so that we get the largest possible revenue? Okay. So anytime I've taught these questions, right, any sort of economic situation, right, like a very basic or, or uh, yeah, a very basic model of like how somebody could make money, right? We could say something like this. Revenue is going to equal, you know, like if you're going to make money, you're going to take the number of something that you sold right? And you're going to multiply it by um, how much did you sell it for in, in uh, Okay, so the very um, basic, basic uh, model. But if you always have this in mind, it makes these kind of questions so much easier, right? Because a lot of the time what people have issues with is coming up with the equations, right? And it's no different than the, the perimeter area thing, right? Basically what you got here, you have your, here's your perimeter and here's your area, basically, right? And you're going to come up with two equations to represent each of these, right? And then you're just going to multiply them together, and then we can we can apply what we've been doing all morning here, right? Where we derive and set the derivative equal to zero, right, for an optimization, okay? Nothing different, right? Actually, when you do these questions as well, you know, we need a, we need a variable, obviously, right? Something's changing here. What is that something? Well, it's the number of fare increases, right? How many times are we increasing by 10 cents, right? Not the 10 cents specifically, but it's the number of times that we increase. So that this is pretty typical as well with these kinds of questions, right? We can always say let X represent um, the number of uh, fare increases. Okay. And so in order to jump down here, I'm just going to write a revenue, right? I'm just going to try to represent this situation using these kind of little tricks that I've given you here. So we could say revenue is going to equal. All right. Well, how are we making money in this particular situation? Well, it's it's from, you know, the number of something sold. Well, it's the number of passengers, right? So we could say number of passengers. And that needs to be multiplied against the fare. Right, how much we're charging. Okay, so let's let's come up with two equations to represent what's going on here then, right? So revenue is going to equal what number of passengers? Well, currently as it stands, we're starting at, or we see that 2,000 passengers are riding the train daily, right? So we're going to see, okay, number of passengers, we're at 2,000. How is that number changing? Well, it's either going to go up or down depending on if we manipulate something, right? The thing that we're manipulating is the number like the fare increase, right? Right. So how much are we how much are we charging ultimately, right? Well, it shows that 40 fewer people, you know, 40 40 fewer people are going to ride this train. Minus 40 for each 10 cent increase in the fare. Well, we said that x was going to represent the number of fare increases, right? So we're going to say 40x. We don't know how many of them we're going to do. 
right? We just know that we're going to increase or uh, decrease the the uh, fare rate, right? So how many times do we do that by 10 cents? You know, it doesn't matter if it's by 25 cents. It doesn't matter, right? We're just going to increase or decrease the fare, right? How many times is the is the variable, right? So that's the first part of this question. We got, you know, we've we've got something. How is how is the number of something changing? Two thousand to minus. We're going to lose passengers for every forty, or sorry, forty passengers for every ten cent increase. That is this right here, right? Now. What's actually happening with the fare? Well, where did we start with the fare? Well, originally it costs $7 per person. So $7, right? And then we're going to add 0 0.1 cents X number of times. Okay? And we end up, if we were to expand this out, we would see that we'd get a, a quadratic, right? So we'd see that we get 14,000 minus 80x minus 4x squared. Okay. Now, we just want to, like, derive this revenue equation, right? Ultimately, what we want to do, we want to derive the revenue equation with respect to, what's my variable? x. That's what we're going to do. Right, so let's do that. Well, if I derive this thing, I'm gonna get negative uh, 80 minus 8x. And for a maximum or minimum, right? For a maximum or a minimum, you know, the um, the rate, right, or the derivative, we're gonna set to equal zero. And we're going to solve for the x value that makes that true. So 0 equals um, negative 80 minus 8x. Bring the 80 over. So what does this mean? All right. It means that we're going to decrease. Right? What does this mean? This means we're, we are going to decrease the fare 10 times. That's what this means. That's what's going on in your head here, right? And so for a maximum revenue, the actual numerical amount of money that we're going to make here, right? We're going to say You know, we're going to, x is going to equal negative 10. So we can come up to our revenue equation, right? And we can find out what the actual um, amount of money would be. But if I was interested in just what to charge, what fare, which is what they're asking, right? You could ask, like, what's the total amount of money that they would make in a month or whatever it was, right? Whatever time frame. You could use this equation to help you. Right. Well, this is what cool. You have all these different equations. Like, you've built this stuff. Right. You can use it to answer different things. The thing we're actually interested in for this particular question is, what is the fare? Okay. The fare. Right. Well, we, we defined what the fare was. So what we're gonna do is for a max, max revenue. What's the fare that causes the the um, the uh, maximum fare uh, revenue? Well. We can find it, right? So for max fare, let's say uh, fare is going to equal 7 plus 0 0.1 times 10, negative 10, sorry. Okay, and so the fare Six dollars. Okay. Okay. We know there is something else here as well. We know that the um, there's kind of a restricted domain here, right? We know if we look back at the question here, right? They have contracts with the the rail company, right? We could say 
I'm just going to move this down here for a sec. Might even shrink it a little bit just to save some room. Okay, we know that there's a, there's a restricted domain. Right, so we, we can't have uh, um, we can't have a certain number of people below or above a certain value, right? And so that's what the restricted domain is. It tells us that there's we can't have any lower than sixteen hundred due to a contract, right? Um, but we can't have any more than twenty six hundred, right? Um, and so in the middle here. What's the number of passengers? Well, the number of passengers is going to be dictated by the 2000 minus 40x. Okay. So we can see there, you know, if we're interested in, in just the restricted domain, right? Like we know what our answer should typically be. It shouldn't fall outside of this like if we were once we found what our x value was it should not fall out of this domain right otherwise we've broken the contract we'd have a different we'd need a different answer right um so hey that's that guys um that'd be an application of with well, something you've already seen before but really the only new information here is this but can you imagine the 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 Overarching theme today is, um, I don't even know where to draw this. The overarching theme today is that this is a much nicer way to do these optimization questions relative to um, completing the square that you've done in the past, right? Um, the problem with the completing the square is that it's only really applicable to quadratics specifically, right? Like you can see we did a volume question today where I don't think you could complete the square on a cubic function. Right, um, so that this is where the derivative comes. This is a more robust method that you can apply to virtually anything. Okay, um, so it's nice and it saves space. Like I don't think the solutions are are any longer. I bet you they're shorter than the completing the square questions. Right, and the thing with the derivative is, it, or if you guys remember completing the square. There is the likelihood of making sign errors or little small errors in completing the square that ultimately affect your end answer, right? And so we want to avoid that. That's what calculus does. It just makes your life a little bit easier, okay? Um, so that's that, okay? There's there's four different kinds of examples of optimization. And you can see the overarching theme there is we always set the derivative equal to zero for an optimal optimization question, right? And there you have it, okay? It's always the same approach it's the coming up with the equations it's going to be the tricky part for you guys okay so that's that you guys let me know if you have any questions